Welcome to this analysis of Piteous My Rhyme Is by Christina Rossetti. So in terms of context, this was written for Quinquagesima, which is a festival or a period of time before Easter in which Christians consider their sins and think about what they might give up for Lent. It's built on the idea that all sin comes from a failure to love, and this links to Matthew's Sermon on the Mount where um, he receives the advice that a foolish man builds his house on sand. And this is an, um, something that is mentioned in twice as well. So the idea that love is the key foundation for everything in life. And if you don't have that, then you have an instable, or unstable foundation. And that's what this poem is about. It has a regular rhyme scheme, like lots of Rossetti's poetry, which represents the steadiness of love. It's structured in two stanzas. The first one is a questioning stanza or a negative stanza, and the second one is more affirmative and positive. So coming on to the first stanza, the first word is quite ambiguous. We're not sure whether the narrator is referring to the poem being piteous or the subject matter being piteous, piteous or what the actual definition of the word piteous is. Does it mean sad? Does it mean not good enough? So there's lots of ambiguity created. The anastrophe emphasises the adjective, so by putting the adjective at the front of the line, it suggests that this is the most important thing to think about at the beginning of this poem and kind of sets the tone for this stanza. The asyndetic listing and use of anaphora here emphasises the disappointment of love, similar to the poem twice. So the idea of love misspent, love in vain, love that is not loved again, lots of unrequited love, um, lots of disappointment in perhaps romantic attachments. The rhetorical question, and is this all then, reveals the narrator's frustration of love and the fact that perhaps it's not worth um, enduring or not worth pursuing if this is all the pain it gives you. The structure using love loveth as long as time is implies that love is eternal. However, the narrator contradicts this sense of eternal love by defining time as but a span. So it kind of suggests that actually love doesn't last forever, it lasts as long as a person does. And I think perhaps what the narrator is discussing in this stanza is romantic attachment. As we know, in the second stanza, it is much more positive in terms of its relationship with love. And I think this stanza it focuses on faith and love for God rather than romantic attachment, which again is similar to Twice, so a good comparison poem for this. The syntactic parallels, which we saw used in Our Mothers, continue to personify love. And actually, the change in tone suggests that love does now last forever. But is it because it's a change in the type of love? It's not a romantic attachment anymore. It's the love of God. The oxymoron, again, is used in Our Mothers and suggestive of the fact that humans need to endure. So the idea of joy being in pain. The idea that perhaps we need to endure these things to make sure that we appreciate heaven once we get to it. And this rhetorical question is a response to the previous one in the previous stanza. And this echoes the structure of uphill, the idea of questioning something and then an assured response. So perhaps now that she has achieved um, religious absolution, she can now feel confident that love does last forever. Love is again personified. It exceeds the span, so it's considered to be immortal and it outlives our life. The final line concludes with the importance of love by calling all in all. And again, this just emphasises that the love of religion, the love of God is more important than romantic attachment.